It's very easy to tell if a design looks good or not, but how do you go from making this look like something like this? In this video, I'll be teaching you four principles that will get you designing like a pro. And welcome back to my channel. My name is Chili, and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. So what exactly is it that makes designs look sleek and professional? Design principles are rules to help create visually pleasing work that is polished and professional looking. There are four design principles that I'll be taking you through today. Color, typography, image, and layout. Use them when you're creating designs and I'll guarantee you'll be designing like a pro soon. But before that, let's do a little design exercise. I saw this post on Chris Doe's Instagram by an agency founder called Joanna Galvao. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I just thought it was a great way to illustrate the importance of visual design as a skill and as a tool for communication. Let's take a look. Which shampoo looks more expensive? So this design looks more high end and it makes you think of a spa. Which coffee is the strongest? The red light coming from behind the package signifies that drinking this will give you a kick in the morning. Um, and the other one looks more like a calm start to the day. Which brand of cookies has the healthiest ingredients? So this one has more earthy colors which make you think of more natural, healthy ingredients, maybe honey and oats, in comparison to the yellow and the pink, which are fun, but they make me think it's packed with sugar. Did you notice how long it took us to make these assumptions? And did you notice that they all had the same logo and the same copy? So you only get one shot to make a first impression with your designs. So look, bakery, bakery, same logo, grandma's recipe, exact same logo and copy. Morning blend and Arabia coffee. This one even has a similar layout, just different colors. This one you can see the exact same logo and daily clarifying shampoo. From what you can see, the choices you make when you're designing make a huge difference in how your product is perceived and its success. So you must make sure that what you choose communicates the brand identity and its goals. We are going to design the UI from this wireframe. A wireframe is a blueprint that maps out where you want certain features to be and intended behaviors. So let's get into these design principles. And this is what we want our final design to look like. So number one, typography. My advice to beginners is just to stick with one simple sans serif font. With more practice and experimenting, you'll be able to match multiple fonts nicely. Stick to something simple like this, which is inter. A sans serif font is a simple font without these little decorative bits at the end, which are called serifs in Latin. Sans means without. So let's create some type style. Um, this is to create hierarchy in your text. We do this already when we're typing documents, where you have your heading, paragraphs, subtext. You can do all of this at the beginning of the design or as you go and you realize you need more styles for your design. I like to have a few at the beginning and then add more as I go on, but try not to have too many styles. The key is to keep everything simple. This is for mobile, so paragraph size of 16 is great. And then you have bigger text for different sized headings and a smaller one for a subtext. Next, colors. Choosing colors can be hard because there's a lot of colors to choose from. To narrow it down, create a color palette. So you select a main color and then you match it with either harmonizing colors or a contrasting color. You can select your main color from maybe the logo that you're gonna use or any of your main images. Let's get into color theory. Um, remember back in school when you learned about your primary colors and your secondary colors? That means you already know some color theory already. So this is a color wheel and you can play around with the color wheel to create different shades and color palette sets. Harmonizing colors are ones that are next to each other. When you're looking at colors that are opposite each other, these are called complementary colors and they also match well within a color palette. So Google's material design also has a color tool where you select one color and it gives you a set of nice harmonizing colors. It also allows you to check how accessible the color is with black and white text. This is to ensure that the contrast is high enough to easily read the text. I've also found this really cute website called Happy Hues where they've created a set of colors that you might not usually put together but work really nicely together. Next, images and icons. So you can use any images you want. I like using Unsplash for stock imagery. 
they have really high quality photographs that are not cheesy you know the ones with the cheesy smiles make sure the images you use are uniform in terms of like the style of photography the brightness of them if you're putting text over your images make sure you put a semi-transparent black rectangle over them to create more contrast for your text now for icons I got mine from the Noun project. Google's Material Design also has an icon tool where you can play around with how they look, like the weight of the lines and if they're filled or not. Figma also has a plugin for this to import the icons directly into your design. So just search Figma plugins and find Material Design and this will install it onto your Figma account. This is where you'll find your plugin and run it and play around with the settings and just drop it onto your design. I will be making a video in the future about useful plugins to have in Figma so make sure you subscribe for that. Number four, layout. So layout is the thing that brings everything together. If you don't get this right it will ruin the whole design. There are three parts to a good layout. Grid, hierarchy and grouping. Let's start with hierarchy. This is the order that you put things in to signify the importance how the readers should read and engage with your information. Your use of bold colors, the size of your text and other graphic elements can also show hierarchy. And then the second part of a good layout is grouping. This is making sure related items are placed together and they are styled the same visually. You can contain them in a card, use color and image to show that they belong together and smaller spaces between these objects will make them feel more connected. And the third part of a good layout is your grid. For this, we use the eight point grid system. Use increments of eight for sizing and spacing of all the elements. So these are your multiples of eight, so eight, 16, 24, 32, and so on. This keeps your designs and the spacing around them consistent. Rules for consistent spacing and sizes help both the designer and the developer work faster and produce more polished work. It also allows for scaling for different device screens, which is called responsive design. Desktop has 12 columns and a mobile, which is a smaller device, will use four columns. A margin of 16, which is the spaces on the outside, and a gutter of eight, which are the swimming lanes in between. So I will show you how to create these guides real quick. So you go to layout grid, click plus. This gives you a square grid. We go to columns and type four, because we want four columns. Then we go to margins and change that to 16 and the gutters to 8. As you can see here, the red squares symbolize 16 pixel spacings across all the different elements. This button does not align to the grid, but it does align to the 16 pixel spacing around the card. So you might have to slightly go off of your grid, but make sure there is a good reason for it. The spacing in between this is eight, which keeps them more grouped together. And the spacing between the cards and the other elements vertically is 16. Okay, so those are your four design principles, but the most important thing is to experiment and try different ideas. This design was made using the same layout and wireframe, just a different color palette, different styles of the button, and the images don't fill the whole card. So remember to just experiment and try new things out. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, I'll be giving away a mental recession every week for the next few weeks. All you have to do is sign up to my mailing list and engage in my content on some of my social platforms. So just like, comment, subscribe, or share anything across any platform. So if you're starting out and you need tailored advice, or you're already a designer and need some career advice, this could be for you. I'll be picking one person randomly each week. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.